Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. My name is Martha Brown, and I am your volunteer with Dementia Friendly Fort Worth. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am your host for today's activities. Our topic today is brought to you by Peggy Spear with the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. Today, Peggy is bringing abstract art to us and we are all looking forward to what we can learn. Mm. Hey, well, thank you for that introduction. And I really hope Janine joins us because this one was for her. So if she joins us late, she'll be still getting in on the action. All right, let me make a big. All right, so today we're looking at um, four different abstract artists and they're all female. So okay. let's jump to it. <laughs> Ooh. What do we yeah, have Georgia here? Key. We have Georgia O'Keeffe not the typical mm. Georgia O'Keeffe's we're, we're used to seeing. So what do we see here? Um, Looks like sunrise. a sunrise. Sun, I think, I don't know who said sunrise, but yes. I, I did. Sunrise, okay. Got it, Yetta? Sunrise. The center one looks like a tunnel. A tunnel. Yes. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Oh, it's going back into space. Of course, all three of them, well, the two side ones look like a train tunnel. And the train's coming at you. And right, the, the train's is, coming yeah. at you, yeah. Uh, they don't well, look like it, but they remind me of a fingerprint. Of, oh, that's yes, a they do. One. Yeah, you're yes. right. That's Ooh. cool, yeah. Well, the title is called Light Coming Onto the Plane. So the title kind of gives it away. Um, and it's number two is on the left, number one is in the middle, and number three is on the right. And typically how we hang them is how you see it with um, the number two and number three on the outside and number one is in the middle. Hmm. So it is it is a sunrise, although during this time when, um, oh yeah, she's here. During this time when O'Keefe was creating these, she was living in West Texas. She was actually a um, teaching at West Texas State Normal College in Canyon, for any of you who know where that is. Um, I'm Canyon. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, I wonder if that school is even the same school or if it's changed. I don't know. I'm changed the name, but it's still the same school. Is it Texas State? Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Texas State of Canyon, I think. So um, she was a she was teaching there at that time. She was <clears throat> really, really interested in um, sunrises, sunsets, and moon risings. And so for this particular one, it is a sunset like yet a guest. And it was, um, she stayed up all night for this particular sunrise. Mm -hmm. And then because she felt during that time when you're up to catch the full transition from dark into light, it's the most um, ethereal, ethereal, it's the most uh, transient. You get kind of get a vibe of, or, you know, you go through the different emotions and senses from that whole um whole experience so that's she was up the full night so can you can you yes i mean it's written on the bottom but she's what material she's working with newsprint but in my mind the one on the right is the very first it's the beginning of the dawn the one on the mm -hmm. left is a little bit lighter and the one in the center is the actual full light. Yeah, the, the way it's sh progressing here and even the way it's numbered doesn't quite match up with what you would think. Right. How you would well, see, see I, I would say something a little bit different. I would say the one on the left is the, the, the moon setting and the next one's the sunrise and the next one's the moon coming up. Oh, okay. So kind of the whole arc of the day. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Just so, my, just, so, my, just my interpretation. Yeah. No, and, and no, there's no wrong way on how you're viewing it. So <coughs> what makes you feel, both of you kind of talk about this being the, the image on the right, being the, the kind of the n most nighttime of them all. What makes yeah. you say that? It's well, darker. It's darker across the top. Yeah. yeah. Darker. Mm-hmm. 
it sort of looks like the moon, you know, when the moon is yeah. up, it gives that as distinct light. as the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So she's using um, a a blue, a, a deep blue, and she's diluting it with water to create these different effects. So are you able to see kind of the, where she's diluting it? Can you see those? Oh, yeah. The mm -hmm. water? Yeah. Here, here, up here. Yeah. And she really liked using this blue for this particular um, depiction because if she was, it was the, the spontaneity of the water in the blue allowed it to create these different effects. So she was really interested. She typically painted with oil. Um, many of the artworks you know by Georgia O'Keeffe are oil on canvas. So she's using something that was easily transportable, watercolors. Think of how you know watercolors typically come in a palette. And they have an immediate effect and the effect and then they dry pretty quickly and it's much easier to manipulate that color with water. Um, you're not having to mix things together necessarily to get different gradations of that color. So she was really interested in that. And then we, someone pointed out that she, she did this on newsprint paper. Some, there's some thought that this might have been in a sketchbook, again, allowing for that um, immediacy to, to transport and you know you can do something and then close it right up. She probably let it dry a little bit just because it is watercolor. So she, you know, she left Canyon going towards Amarillo, was out on the plains <coughs> in the middle of the night. So this could have been in a sketchbook, and she was capturing different moments of that sunrise as quickly as she could. And eventually it could have been removed from her portfolio or sketchbook. And so that's why they're all uniform size. Yeah. Um, and it's a standard paper size. It's 20 by, I think it's 20 by 24. Might be even smaller, but yeah, so it's a standard paper size. Something that confuses me on the darker one is that the ground, if that's the ground, is more distinct in that one. So that yeah, leads me to is. think it's in the daytime. Mm. Because it might be just because it's the shadow on the ground from being dark. Well, this is abstract. So she might not be defining an exact moment of time. Um, she might just be getting to the feel of a moment, which is you know, kind of a hallmark for um, abstract art, is kind of getting right. towards the capturing an emotion or the ambiance versus the actuality of what we're seeing. So yes, that ground does look different than um, maybe the ground in the other ones, but, and maybe it is very deliberate. Maybe she purposely didn't dilute it as much or um, she wanted it to, to feel this was an earlier part of the, of the sunrise versus a, a, you know, a brighter part where we're seeing, you know, the sun seems to have broken the horizon here. Maybe and, that was the first one she was experimenting. Well, this one on the right is number three. So, it, I mean, again, artist live. We we've learned anything. Artist live. So she might. It might not have been number three in the series. It might have been. So we don't we don't know exactly if these are numbered or how we just acquired them. I don't I don't know. But because um, actually the whole thing is a little bit not as defined as the others. Yes. You know the shapes and things like that. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like it was a, a rough sketch. Yeah, and, and it idea. has that, it, it's, she did this um, on the spot. So there is that kind of that feel of maybe not super premeditated, but exper experimenting. And she was, was definitely experimenting in this moment um, with the watercolors, because this wasn't a, a typical medium for her. Um, well, and, uh, at, you know, as, as I've done watercolor paintings, and I could easily see she was using one shade of blue, just diluting it in color. Mm -hmm. as she went down yes uh, except for the one on the, the number three that she may use she, she used up she was brown or something it, it does look like there's it. another color mixed in there and yeah. there might yeah. be um yeah. but she was using ultramarine was the color ultra that was, blue. was the base color she was using yeah and even down here i i feel like there might have been some yellow introduced or, yeah know. yeah mm -hmm. 
because it has a bit of a green, but we don't know. We just know that she had her watercolors and she was working out, out al fresco or, you know, plain air and um, was able to capture the sunset. So this was, she was um, creating, this was made in 1917, the series. She was creating at a time where women artists were not really um, considered in the canon of art at that time, or they weren't considered the um, trendsetters and avant-garde. So the fact that um, she was doing something like this, this abstract, um, was different, was, was not getting recognized at the time. So this artwork, she was teaching, but she was not recognized at, at a larger level at this point. What, 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 what point in her life was she doing this or later life? No, this was early life. So this she was early life. Okay, yeah, this yeah. Is 1917. Okay, 1917. Earlier in her career, at least. Okay, she so, was 30. Mm -hmm. so yeah, 30 years old. Later in her life, she had a, a lot of success with her paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and she was married. Um, we've talked about this in the past, but she was married to Alfred Stieglitz, who was a very famous photographer. But he also owned a. Um, it's called Gallery 291 in New York City. Which oh, okay introduced a lot of avant-garde abex or just abstract artists into the scene and so um her she was an, an artist in her own right and then her marrying someone who was also an artist would help get her to the channel she needed to really elevate her um, talent all right so we're gonna we're gonna keep on this natural theme and we're moving to another artist in our collection her name is Hedda Stern, and this is from our Tamarin collection. We've spoken, um, we've seen quite a few artworks from this Tamarin workshop, um, and it's that workshop that was originally based in LA, and now it is based out of the University of New Mexico, and it was created in, the in 1960, and it was in, in LA until the 70s, but the this photography workshop was for artists who were well known in any and other mediums besides lithography. And this workshop was created to help launch lithography, kind of a resurgence in lithography um, as a fine art in the United States. So most artists that were uh, of notoriety during you know, the 50s and 60s and the 70s were invited to have a, a a stay at this workshop to kind of translate what they were doing to paper. So this is another, this is an example. This particular artist was, um, had created all sorts of art, um, works on, not works on paper per se, but um, yeah, did works on paper, but painting as well. And so she was brought on in 1967 to, for, I think it was for almost two months to, create what she was doing basically on canvas, but on paper. So this is untitled, which as we know, a lot of our abstract artists often title their artworks untitled, but we know what she's depicting here. Are there any guesses on what she's depicting? The flower. A flower? You're close. It's not, <laughs> it's not a flower, but it is something that grows. And it's cabbage. So, what did you say, Martha? Explosion. And it, it's okay, so it's not an explosion, it's an actual organic thing. Thing is it a cabbage? Is, God, is it I think something? you're as close as we're gonna get. It's lettuce, kind of a mold or something like that. A fungus, it's it's lettuce. It's a lettuce. 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 I said lettuce. Oh, you did, Janine. I'm sorry, I didn't. Why, <laughs> yeah, so she was really interested in when so when she was there, she focused on two themes. One of them was lettuce yeah. and one of them was horizon, like horizontal and vertical, like horizon lines. So this um, particular uh, depiction is of, of lettuce and she's using some color here and she did several variations of, um, of the um, lettuce. So here's another version. And no, it's your screen is not blurry. Woo! How it looks. Whoa. Oh. That hurts. I know. Yeah, it does. It's like you need to yeah. put 3D glasses on. Go back to the other one. Go back to the other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Oh. So very different, but you still kind of get that. Yeah. Wow. And then this is another one. Oh. Huh. And she so likes lettuce she, or something? 
this is lettuce. Yeah, they're all different mm. variations of the same subject. So she took this run of the mill vegetable you find at a grocery and lifted it to this, this grand, beautiful, organic, breaking it down really to the organic lines and shapes that this, this um, thing is. So of the three, is anyone feeling most, most attracted to this one? Raise your hand. Well, it, no. Yeah. In Go between, no. 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 no, no, no. This one. Wow. That one, yes. probably yes. more yes. than the other, yeah. And so she was, um, she would draw them first and then she would draw it then onto the matrix, the stone of the, um, for the lithograph. And okay. she would, um, so she was really able to kind of see what she was, all of her different lines. I mean, you can see, particularly in this one, the lines, and then here too. So there was a lot of thought in her drawings. And then she was, yeah, if I, you know, it, it's just untitled, untitled, and then untitled. And this was part of the metaphors and metamorphosis. Uh, series and it's all it's all the same thing she's um she did other vegetables too not with this series but in painting she did cauliflower she was really interested in the organic lines the the standard shape so to speak of of the vegetable but then the variations within them and so because of this you know she did she worked in so many different mediums she lived for over 100 years and wow. um she had, was creating for nine decades. So she was always, always um, working, creating. But because her, about her um, process and her mediums changed and her themes changed so frequently, she's often not categorized as a particular type of artist. And because of that, she's often not listed in the, the we call it the art history canon. It, she's not often looked at very closely because she doesn't fit nicely into any particular movement. So some of them, especially the middle one, looks as if she has just been doodling on a piece of paper with a pencil. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that one does look like an explosion. Uh, yeah. It does. Yeah. I mean, they all really do. Mm -hmm. And this to me looks like, um, a cabbage, if you were looking like a cabbage planted in the ground, if you were looking down at it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. who, you know, she she would cut them up and and crop the, the artwork in a way where you didn't really quite know what you were looking at unless you were told what you were looking at. Um, so she was really examining the different different properties as a formal element versus oh, this is lettuce. It was more breaking it down to what makes it lettuce. I like the middle one. You do. These were actually on view um, a couple of years ago. We had them hanging on the wall um, side by side by side. And so it was really cool to see how, how creative she got within that, the, the prints that she did on the same topic. The Eamon Carter owns these three. Yes, so we, um, the, the, this is from the Tamarin collection. And so we were <laughs> received all of the holdings from Tamarin um, of prints that were made. So um, I think what the next one we're looking at is, yeah, the next artwork we're looking at is also from this Tamarin collection, which is, um, I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds of prints from so many artists who weren't necess necessarily lithographers or printmakers, but were invited to create in this medium. All right, so we're moving from Hedda Stern and we're moving to Ruth Asawa. Oh, that could have been the same artist almost. Mm -hmm. It looks simple. like a dandelion. A dandelion. That's what I was going to say, dandelion. Uh-huh. I think it, a cactus, it's since it's a desert plant, it's a cactus flower. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's right, it's a desert plant is what um, she oh, titled yeah. this one, and Ruth Asawa. We um, we talked about Ruth in this program before, and she's really well known for her sculpture, um, wire sculptures that would hang 
from the ceiling. She um, she worked in all. She started off as a as a draftsman, as as someone who was really good at drawing, and um, a lot of those ideas would then translate to her works on paper, but also translated to her sculpture as well. So, this desert plant she created in 1965 at the Tamarin workshop for the same place, just a couple of years. This was a couple of years before her. Um, she was working in that same studio and she was there for two months. And uh, this was in still in LA at the time. So she, she lived in San Francisco. She's a Japanese American. And she came down from San Francisco, left her six kids and husband behind for those two months. God bless that man. <laughs> and, um, and was able to create. And this was a theme, the desert plant she started doing in sculpture initially in about 1962, because a friend had gifted her a desert plant. And she was so interested in what this plant was, she started, you know, getting desert plants and deconstructing them completely to really understand what these matrices look like um, when pulled apart. So do you get, do you see these matrices that she's drawing? Yes, I want to know I how she got the center so uniform. She drew them, so. Blood vessels and capillaries is what it, it looks like to it me. It looks like an eyeball. An eyeball, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what I thought of, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you're right. An I, eyeball that needs some eye drops, huh? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Definitely organic. Very organic. Yeah. Yeah, she um, and her children always remember her making art, whether she was doodling while they were watching TV, doodling while she was watching them. She would get up in the morning and create before the kids woke up. It never felt like a chore. Her children reflect on it saying it, it she was just always creating. That's who she was. Their house was a, a space for creation. So this was something she was always very, very interested in. And, and not just this particular desert plant. She's actually taking something and completely abstracting it. But these types of organic forms, this has inspired her to create other creations, other works, whether it's on paper or in sculpture, because of those intricate um, matrices. So she created 54 prints while she was there. Wow. Um, and she was really focused on this theme, um, have the exact number. Yeah, she made, she and she worked with seven printers. So part of this workshop too is um, the artist would be creating the, the, the design, the print, the whatever. And then they had printers who were, who were there as well. And these would be the people who would actually run it through um, the printing press the, on the lithography stone. Because that okay. would, you know, that's a real skill in and of itself. And I'm so, going to have to leave for today, folks. Uh, I will see you tomorrow with cookies. Yes. And uh, have a great rest Bye, of the day. Bye, Steve. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Um, so she, what she would do is she had seven printers that were working with her. She would make them all dinner. And then they'd all go back to the studio and work through the night. So she, she didn't have her six kids there. She had seven printers and was still assuming that, that role. <laughs> so this is this artwork. Um, we have a couple of them. One was recently on view. I'm not sure if it was exactly this one. Because they, these are works on paper, they can only stay up for a certain amount of time yeah. before then we have to rest them. So, um, And then when we reopened in uh, last, or I guess now 2018, 2019, we reopened. These were out for three months, which as long as I've um, been here, I had never seen them in person because they always had to be rested. So that was really cool. They were up for three months and now they're they're back to the vault to rest. And we have one more artwork. <sighs> and this is up kind of recently. This was, um, we had an Ellen Carey show. Uh, she's a, a, come here, works, she's a photographer essentially um, in the area. And this particular artwork is called Zerogram. So can you tell me what you see here? Lots of cool colors and straight lines. Straight lines, <laughs> cool colors. Um, it looks kind of like a gem. Mm -hmm. oh, I was like going to say a crystal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A crystal, yeah. Do you have any guesses on what material this is? I mean, you see it's a die coupler print, but the, do you know what that means? No. No. I would have thought something like aluminum. Oh, yeah. No, it does. It really does look like that. It's 
photo paper. Photo paper. Photo so she Thanks. would, she does, she's still creating. Um, she would, would go into the dark room and use photo paper, but with no camera and create these, they're called photograms. Have you ever heard that phrase before, photograms? No. no. Some of the original photograms would be um, an artist, you know, in the, when this type of photo sensitive paper was first invented, the artist would put the paper out and kind of like my, what you might've done in like Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, where you put then a leaf on top of the paper and then the sun captures mm -hmm. it in the right. and then you've got basically the shadow of yeah. what that was. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what a photogram is. But instead she's not putting any objects on top of it to create a recognizable thing she's folding the paper. So now yeah. that you know she's folding the paper. Folding the paper, yeah. You can see those sharp lines that Janine mm -hmm. made immediately drawn to was the clean, crisp lines. And you can see kind of the, the dented, you know how photo paper oh, is. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes it. more sense now that you say what the medium is. Mm -hmm. Old paper, interesting. So she would expose it to different fil light filters. And that's what would create these different, the, the photosensitive paper, dye coupler print, coupler print is the type of paper that it's on. Um, it's cheap paper, it's affordable paper, it's not super stable. So eventually over time, the colors start to fade or um, yellow. And it's different layers in this paper. So when certain light hits it, um, oh. it activates those, that sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And so she was using different lights in the dark, then folding these papers. And so she never knew what she was going to get until she mm. was finished in the dark room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So did she say that, uh, she used different colored lights to, to while she was folding this. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so she was, you know, some of the, the appeal of her work is you can feel the artist process. You can almost see kind of how you can see the artist's hand, which sometimes it's really hard to see the artist's hand in artwork. And that's, you know, there's, if you take in any art history classes, there's this whole uh, theory or, you know, idea you have to read about when you're in front of the artwork, you're in the presence of the artist himself, whether or herself, whether they lived now or they lived 200 years ago, there's, you're exactly in the hand of the artist, which is really kind of a profound thought. And so this is, you can really see the artist working. And so um, she's made, she continues to make these, this one's about 20 by 24 inches. We had it on view, um, I think in 2017. And then um, we acquired it, it was a loan to us. And then we ended up acquiring the artwork. And now, um, now it's resting in the vault. Awesome. So of all the things we've seen today, what are we feeling is the most, the most interesting and the most funky? Well, I think that uh, Ruth Asawa, I thought that was the most interesting one. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Pretty. I, need, I love these. I, I like O'Keefe as well. I, I do too. Yeah, yeah. It's so different than any other O'Keefe you're used to seeing that is just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. very beautiful and, and serene hey, feeling. Can I, can I show something that uh, kind of reminds me of what these pictures are? Please. Yeah, this is a... Uh, oh, cool, yeah. Something oh. like that, uh, agate. Oh my. Yeah. Geode, I mean a geode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that, that's, that's what remind, it reminds us a little bit of that sort of thing. Oh my gosh, O'Keefe would love that you just said that. <laughs> she did it all natural, all desert, all yeah. earth. Yes. Yeah. Okay, oh, just wanted to throw that in there. That is such a cool comparison. You're right. It really is, especially the one on the far, this picture on the right looks yes. like yes. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Peggy, yeah. I'm only sad that, that you brought these. I, I want about a dozen more. <laughs> Yes. I, can, I can hit you with some more abstract at another time. Don't you worry. We, we could go on for another hour, Peggy. Everything I know. And these are cool because these are the, just... Oh, go ahead, Janine. I'm sorry. Say it again. Everything except for the last one was all circles. I like the last one. You like more of the angular... Yeah. 
and no no reference to anything but itself i mean yeah these were truly inspired by yeah. things in the world and this is just kind of luck of the draw but kind of looks like a grocery do. bag grocery bag oh, <laughs> everything the- you saw today can fit in that grocery bag then that's a <laughs> Frankly, it looks like the bottom of a gift bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Several gift I, bags I, I like what Janine said about uh, gems or crystals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you look at, under the microscope at some salt or some other crystal yeah. mm-hmm. crystal material, you'd see something sugar. like this, sugar, something like this. Mm-hmm. Cool. Peggy, science brains of you. Uh, do we have any any pictures in the collection of microscopic art? Microscopic art, no. Of of actual things that are bitty bitty bits. Yes. Or uh, we have. Um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. She's a professor up at UNT, and she did a lot of plant artwork where you were looking at the seed under a microscope. Ooh. Oh, okay. Mm. So that's. But it's very, it's it's abstract, but it's also, you can very much tell that it's botanical that she's replicating. Okay. Um, we can look at her another time when we do something plant-like, but she was on view recently, and I am totally spacing on her name. That's okay. Dornith Doherty, Dornith Doherty, that is her name. And she um, is still a professor at UNT. Wow, hmm. thank you. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys, well, that's, those are our abstract thoughts for this week. Well, just a second. I got a question for you, Peggy. Please. Oh, were you going to say what she's going to do next week? Yeah, I'm looking for it. So you you keep talking. <laughs> okay, we can keep talking. That's but it's, it's always such a surprise. when you Yes. Just you know Wednesday. what? Yeah, it's a surprise for me too most times. So <laughs> <laughs> and you heard so this. Uh, hanging on by the seat of our pants here. Peggy, when you said abstract art, I was thinking about um uh paint it paint thrown up against a canvas or re- really unusual abstract art you have mm-hmm. given me a whole new oh i'm glad a whole new concept yeah. about what abstract is it's this abstract. this i like yeah some of the abstract when it's mm-hmm. just a white piece of material with one blue line through it <laughs> to me that it's not art so yeah. none of the yeah. artists the artist, the art you guys are mostly speaking about is abex, abstract expressionism. And that was, oh. you know, those are your oh. Pollocks and your Rothkos and your Helen Frankenthalers. Yeah. Um, these are, you know, abstract is so abstract in terms of what makes it abstract art that these were ones that selfishly I liked, but recently they were on view. So it, they're totally different. Bec- and and they're not, you know, Janine liked the one that was truly, truly abstract in that it's it's nothing but what it was created, whereas the other ones were inspired by things but reduced down to um, the, the characteristics that yeah. make it its thing. So when next time we do abstract, I'm going to throw you all for a curve and we're going to do whatever else you've got in the vault. So right. yeah, hold on. Thank you, but Peggy. next week we're taking a hard left and we're going to trains. Very different oh, than what we've um, done. Um, trace? Today, but trains. 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 All right. So I think Martha, this was one you might have listed in your um, in your interest. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna haul it on onto a train and see what we've got in store for that. I I don't know what we have, so we will find out. That's okay. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Peggy. Okay. You, thank you, Peggy. And thank you, Peggy, us. very much. We'll see you next week, Peggy. I'll see y'all next week. Be good. Stay warm. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and the birds just, he's here and outside. Can you hear that? Yes. yes. <laughs> Tomorrow we have cookie conversations with Gail Snyder. Yay. Yay. She's going to make Valentine cookies with icing. And yet, I, I, have you found out yet if you're going to sing? Uh, no, but I'm sure we are because they're always always it's very seldom that they don't show up okay well we shall miss you but gail will be with us and she said she has missed us all and she can't wait to be back well great we'll Mm -hmm. we'll welcome her back she's kind of like a duck you don't see what's going on but the feet are just going like crazy under the water oh i'll be sure to tell her that you think she looks like a duck (laughs) (laughs) i love it You guys are something else.
Stop share. Here we go. There's our there's our faces again. There's our faces. Yeah. 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 Just cute little faces. Anybody have any news from yesterday? We got water. Woohoo! <laughs> but only cold. Yeah. That's better than none, isn't it? Oh man. It was like digging for gold and get a big <laughs> oh. thing of gold, yes. Yes. That is wonderful. So we are actually heading out now to get a shower at some friend's house. Oh, that'll feel so good. It will. Hi. Hi, Janine. Hi. I had to cancel my EEG yesterday because I was too dizzy and weak to drive. Oh, well, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like in South Fort Worth, so uh, I don't. I haven't gotten it rescheduled yet, so we'll have to see mm. when that is. Keep us posted, will you? And I got my appointment for my uh, vaccine yesterday. How was it, Dusty? Ooh. No, no, I got the appointment yesterday. Oh. It'll be Friday. Awesome. Cool. That's wonderful. Woohoo! You're getting started. Well, I might find somebody to take me because well. it's over at Globe Life Stadium. Yeah. Where is that? It's in Arlington. I'm not going to drive over there. Arlington. Yeah, that's a haul yeah, for your drive place, over there. isn't it, Dusty? Yes. It's a shame it's in Arlington because Fort Worth would take you on mitts if it was if it was in the city limits. Yeah. But I don't know anybody lately that goes across city limits to do uh, transport. Does the Catholic charity people do it? You could check, Dusty. I think, I think. Uh, these people that have been coming out here, I, I'm made friends pretty good with this one lady. I think I can get her to find me somebody. Okay, great. Good luck, good luck. Pretty soon we're all gonna have vaccines in arms and it's gonna get better. Yep. Well, the numbers in Tarrant County are lots better, way better. Yep. 300, 300 and something yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yay. That's what we need is fewer numbers. I can remember how long it took us to get up to the first 300 and that seemed like forever Yeah, of the number of cases we had. So mm -hmm. I think the cases have gone down because nobody went anywhere during the I think so too. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think it's also because we have started to be smarter and wearing our masks. More people are wearing masks. Well, and I think once we get to spring break time, uh, we're probably going to see some more super spreader events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Woodstock and I will be indoors waiting for it all to go away. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I, I hope you and Hans have a wonderful soapy time today. Thank, thank you. We will. Uh, we need to clean up the house also. You know how it gets a mess when you just have pots and pans sitting out with yeah. water yeah. over the place. My, mine's a mess right now. Yeah. I'm washing my first load of laundry, Maya. I was thinking of you when ah. I put it in, but only with <laughs> cold water. That's you know what? That's okay. That's, That's okay. All right, yes. It yes, beats it that is. scrub board like somebody talked about. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. So we we'll, we will see you on Friday. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.